Welcome to another episode of Bengals Nation. Let's hear it. Presented by Wendy's and Nehemiah Manufacturing. How about a fourth straight win for our guys in stripes? We're gonna break it all down and look ahead to the Texans. Let's welcome out our two player guests each week. You know them as Mike Hilton and DJ Reader. Welcome back, guys. Four what's up, straight what's up, what's wins. Up? That's got to feel pretty good. Feels pretty good, man. I can't believe, I mean, I feel good. Feel good. Feel real good, man. You know, uh, just trying to take one game at a time, though, trying to get to five. From where we started until now, that locker room, we'll start with you, Mike. Uh, it's got to feel a little more loose. You guys got a little more energy around there? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, that's one thing I can say about this group. Even when we, when we were uh, one and three, nobody panicked. Like, the energy was still high in the locker room, and now that we kind of caught a good rhythm, you know, we, we've been rolling and playing some, some, some good ball. You know, it was a little frustrating at first. You know, you, you, I think it was a little manifested energy. We just, we just kept saying, let's gonna get right, let's get right. And then, you know, finally it started going our way and I think I was a lot happier now. Big win Sunday night, under the lights. You beat the Buffalo Bills, a very good team in the AFC. Your first AFC win, the first Sunday night win by the Bengals too. Uh, I think the thing that coming out of that game that I think of is the stripes for the fans out in the stadium. DJ, could you tell, like, what, what'd you think? I, when I first looked up in the stands, I couldn't tell, but like on the aerial view, when I looked up on the board, cause I watched the board the whole game. It was dope, it looked pretty cool. What about you, Mike, what'd you think? Man, I just want to shout out all the fans. Y'all did y'all thing with yeah, that one, man. Y'all yeah, definitely brought the energy, man, and uh, it carried it to a big win. CJ Stroud has taken a lot of people by surprise, especially last week, that final drive he had was incredible. Looked too easy. Are, Mike, you surprised how well he's acclimated to the NFL so quickly? I, I am. Um, you know, obviously watching him at Ohio State, you definitely saw the potential, but the way he stepped in and got these guys to four and four, and you know, uh, been playing well. So uh, shout out to him, but we, we, we got to make it difficult for him on Sunday. What about you, DJ? What do you see out of CJ? Uh, you know, he seems to be a special. Uh, you know, he's got a city behind him. You could tell when he first came in, he was really confident and wanted to make a difference. And, he had that chip on his shoulder about he wanted to prove that he was the guy and be who he thought he was and be go out there and do his thing. And it's kind of, it's inspiring to see, but you know, we got to go out there and do our thing against him, mix it up a little bit and, uh, you know, get a dub on Sunday. Hey, every rookie has his moments. These guys hope that they're going to make him have a couple rookie moments. For more on that game, let's go talk to the head coach, Zach Taylor. Zach, another win, four straight wins under the lights. How are you feeling after that win after the Bills? Feel good. You know, I thought the stadium had great energy with the fans, striping out the stadium. Our players responded great to that. I thought it was a great complimentary team win in all three phases. Saw the guys pregame dancing around. They looked loose for having all that pressure, the Sunday night lights on them. Are you a coach that wants your guys more locked in, or do you want them dancing around and loose? We, we want them loose. You know, they, they put in the work the first five days of the week. We want the 24 hours before the game for them to feel like they've, they've got the confidence they've earned, they put in the work. Uh, now it's time to relax and be loose. So we, we do a lot of things like that to try to get them to loosen up. And I like it in pregame when they feel that way. There's a lot of nerves that go into that, especially when the ball is kicked off, I assume, you know, big time opponent, a lot of pressure. You come out and you start fast, a couple touchdowns. Does that help you know, alleviate the nerves, get a little confidence in, under the guys? And, uh, our guys have no shortage of confidence going into a game, but to score early takes the pressure off the defense, allows the offense to see, hey, the things we worked on are going to work, and um, allows you to start the right way. Tanner Hudson, a guy that got a lot of people might not know, you elevated him, he was able to have a pretty good game. Tell me, who is Tanner Hudson and, <laughs> and why is he able to make those plays like that? Yeah, he, he's been a great player for us in the practice squad. He had an opportunity in the Rams game, came up, made some plays for us as well. So just a guy that we all have confidence in, the quarterbacks have confidence in him, the coaches do, the players do. And so he stepped up when his number was called, made some big plays for us. Defense once again. Bend but don't break, come up with some red zone turnovers against a really good offense. When they get those turnovers, what does that do for you as both the head coach and the offensive coordinator? Yeah, it allows us to go attack, you know, and so they give you short field and you got to respond the right way to it, get points on the board. And, and uh, so again, our defense has done a great job taking the ball away. When they do those choreographed dances, do you have any input? Do you know what they're going to do? And would you ever join in on them? I, I definitely don't see them during the game. You know, it's something that when you watch the TV copy after the game, it's probably the first time that I ever see it. What do you think? Could you join in? You, you get a no, little out of the dance? I'm not and no, not a dance in join in. They, they have their own fun. They don't need an old coach like me to jump in the middle. <laughs> When we return, the guys are joined by Mr. Turnover at linebacker himself, Jermaine Pratt, as we get down to just what makes Jermaine so good at getting that ball out. Uh, 
I want to welcome y'all to another week of getting defensive, man. I'm your host, Mike Hill, and this is your host, DJ Rita. Yo, yo, yo. And today we got a real special guest, man. Made the play of the game uh, Sunday night. Y'all give a loud, proud welcome to Jermaine Pratt. Play all peace. Fred, Fred, what's up, man? What's up? What's up with y'all? How y'all doing? I mean, we gonna get straight to it, man. Uh, you, you tell us about the play you made Sunday night, man. It was the, really the game winning play, and needed it at a crunch time. Um, this is one of the plays I'm usually making. You know, in them critical situations, I always try to attack the ball and try to um, get it get it back to nine. You know, get the ball back to nine. That that's what make us um, chan our chances of winning better. I feel that, I feel that. Hey, Pete, you, you, you probably got some of the best quotes that I've heard in our locker room, man. Where, where did your mind come up with these quotes? How do, you, how, do you, how do you think about these things? I mean, it just come off the top of my head, you know. I got a mastermind, just like some of these people out there. <laughs> so if y'all haven't heard, his most recent quote is, grass green, money green. P gonna get that green. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently that green is that ball on Sunday nights, man. <laughs> but uh, we got we got a big one next week, man. Uh, a tough Houston team, a young Houston team, kind of remind us of ourselves in 21. So uh, what we gotta do to get a victory? Um, this, everybody do their 111. You know, this team is good. You know, they got a quarterback that's on the rise. You know, he can make every throw. Uh, we just gotta do our job. Go out there and play Bengals football. You know what we're custom with doing. Showcasing it each, each and every day. I feel it, man. And to end the, end the show, man, I just want to ask you, man, where this energy you get on the field, man? Where did it come from? Where did where this inspiration come from, man? Um, this is the love and passion I got for the game, you know? I feel like it's unmatched, you know? When I'm with my brothers and stuff, playing with y'all, you know, it's a special thing, you know? We a bunch of kids out there running, playing football, tackling and running. <laughs> we like... <laughs> Who do this, you know? <laughs> Want to hit another place? Oh, well, I ain't gonna get in trouble for hitting them. <laughs> but yeah. Well, P, man, we appreciate you coming on getting defensive, man. Like I said, let's go get this dub Sunday and keep it rolling, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. What's up? Zach, you got the Houston Texans coming up. They're one of the surprise teams in the NFL this year, really young across the board. And first time head coach, D'Amico Ryans, he was in the league for a long time. How does D'Amico Ryans, the head coach, compare to the linebacker that we saw for a long time? Very disciplined. You know, they got a team that's really fundamentally sound. That's how he was as a player. That's how he was as a linebacker coach. That's how he was as the coordinator. Uh, so it's no surprise this team plays that way as the head coach. TJ Stroud, rookie, he's been lighting up the last couple of weeks. What do you see out of him that has allowed him to come in here and just be able to take over a franchise and, and be able to do what Joe Burrow did a few years ago when he was a rookie? He obviously prepares the right way. There, there's only one way to play the way that he does, and that's through great preparation and having confidence in yourself. And that really shows up just in the way that they operate on offense, the way that he features a lot of different players at different positions. Um, he's played really well through this first half of the season. I know you treat them all the same, but when you go up against a rookie quarterback, is there something that you can throw at them? Does it open up the playbook maybe a little bit more defensively because maybe they haven't seen everything like, like you would a veteran quarterback? Well, that's always true. You know, they learn through their experiences, so, so they're always going to have bumps in the road. You hope that this week is a week that we can provide that bump in the road for him, but um, he's passed all the tests he had so far. We have saw him play early in the season against Baltimore in his first road game ever. Um, thought he played really well in that game as well. So. Um, again, it'll be a challenge for our team to play against them. They had last week an interesting thing happen where they had to put the emergency kicker in there, the running back, to make a kick. Zach Taylor on the Nebraska Cornhuskers, if your coach came up and said, Zach, I need you to make an extra point, do you make that extra point? Nope. Nope. I'm one of the worst kickers and punters <laughs> of, uh, that you've ever been around. So just having been on a football field my entire life, picking up balls, kicking them, punting them, I'm terrible at it. And uh, so I do not believe that I could make that extra point with the game on the line. So you tried. You've tried to make a kick. Oh, I've tried to make kicks. I, I, not to say I haven't made an extra point before, but uh, I do not have a high degree of confidence that I'd step up and, and, and rise to the challenge there in the kicking aspect of the game. Well, good news. I don't think we're going to need you to kick, make any kicks anytime soon. Right? I'm not planning on that ever happening in the rest of my life. Bengal Tizers, sponsored by Sensoy. Hey everybody, it's Josh Feed and Dave Fulcher here with another episode of Bengal Tizers with Sam from Sinsoy. Now last week we sampled some Bill's Cuisine. This week we're on to Texas 
and it looks like you got some chili for us. Oh, yeah. We did some chili. We did a three meat chili. We got some cheddar cheese. And of course, you got to have the crunchy on top. So we got some of those uh, corn chips to tie it all together. Nice. Uh, let's try this, Dave. Well, when I look at this here, man, I look at, I'm a California guy. Yeah. Okay. This is California type chili. Yeah, I chew a California, bit. I like, Texas. Uh, yeah, it's California, you know, having the multiple yes. types of meats, that's a, that's a very uh, Texas style. Uh, little beans in there, because I like beans myself. And this has the chili crisp, the salt, and the soy sauce in it. Very so cool. It's a little bit of a mixture of all flavors. And you can get uh, Sinsoy and Kroger now, officially. Officially landed at Kroger as of last week. We've got our soy sauce and our oh chili crisp there. Uh, you'll see us doing demos. Watch out for us. You know, I feel like I'm at home, man. This is delicious. This is, this is far best. I'm going to need this recipe. The best one got me. All this right. is the one I like. I like this one. This is my favorite so far. Yeah, this is this is really good. I can do this all day. Can you some Sin Soy at Kroger? Who day all day right here, man. This will be nice, especially when mm -hmm. it's not 70 degrees in November. All right. Mm -hmm. all right. When we return on Bengals Nation, Zach hits the Telestrator to break down some of the best plays from Sunday's win over the Buffalo Bills. Coach Taylor's Breakdown, sponsored by Wendy's. Okay, here's a couple of plays from last week's game and the win over Buffalo. The first one here uh, was an interception we had, so we punted them down to the 12-yard line, and two plays later, they're going to run kind of a, what we call a, a 39 concept here versus cover two. And so they're trying to throw a cover two hole shot about 20 yards down the sideline, two yards from the boundary. Cam Taylor does a great job of showing body language like he's affected by this out route. And so when, when Josh Allen sees that, he thinks he can plug this whole shot over here before it gets to safety. But Cam does a great job feeling that, rallying to it, and, and getting a, his third interception in four games. So really good awareness, really good hands by Cam, and good job baiting him into that throw. And then, and then next drive, third and two, again, backed up after a great punt, great coverage on the punt. We're going to get a sack here on third and two. So you're going to see doing a really good job in our single high look of covering all these guys in the underneath zones just past the sticks. And then you're going to see from the end zone copy here, uh, Sam and BJ do a great job over here on the left side of the defensive line. So BJ does a great job penetrating. Sam's the looper. And then they both end up getting to the quarterback and with the help of Trey finishing that thing off. So great coverage and great, great rush opportunity there by our defensive line. And then we got a third and six. Got them backed up. And what you're going to see is they're, they're trying to run a concept that we actually ran in this game. They're trying to run an inbreaker. And then with Dalton Kincaid, they're trying to run what they standard run is the out route, but the double move off of it. So uh, you're going to see here, Dax does a great job matching the route. And, and as Trey Hendrickson goes by the, the passer, he does a great job peeling off and Josh doesn't feel him. And he finishes off with a great, great sack opportunity there. So yeah, really good coverage, really good. First of all, by Dax Hill covering the double move there by Kincaid. And great job by Trey Hendrickson and, and Logan keeping him in the pocket and finishing off that play right there. So. Really good team defense over there overall. And then you're going to see late in the game, again, they're in a scoring position down in the red zone, down by 11 points. So a touchdown makes this a really tight game. You're going to see a choice route again here by Dalton Kincaid. And so he does a great job on the choice, but as he breaks inside, as he leaves his feet, something we really stress in the ball security, that's where the ball's vulnerable. And you're going to see here, uh, Jermaine Pratt knows that and comes and punches it out. So he leaves his feet, the ball gets loose. Whenever you leave the feet, it gets away from your body. Jermaine does a great job punching that out. And Nick Scott's right there for the recovery. Huge red zone turnover again by our defense and Jermaine Pratt. And then on the offense side of the ball, the first drive of the game, they're going to play three over two down here to Jamar. So you're going to see them nearly tackle Jamar as he runs his route. So again, they're, they're doing everything they can to take him away. And so the one-on-one -on -one that really shows up is Irv on the safety up top. And Irv does a great job winning. Great throw to the back pylon. Irv leaves his feet, gets two feet in. Uh, great job on the first drive of the game to go get that scoring opportunity. So really good stuff there by the offense. And then the next drive, third and two, four down territory. We hand the ball off to Mixon. Great movement up front by the offensive line, and Mixon walks right in. So really good stuff here. You can see there's a big weakness over here uh, by the defense. Mixon finds it and is able to barrel themselves in for our first 14 points of the game. And then a key third and seven here. So we're in a seven-man protection. Uh, they just showed us cover zero. We were in a seven-man protection. Now they're going to play two-man. And so again, we got to try to win on these end breakers up top with TB coming across. He's got to beat tough leverage. Um, but Drew Sample does a great job. Once his man initially doesn't come, he leaks out, Burrow finds him, and then he finishes off the route. And so no, no corner really wants to take a big 
255-pound tight end on like Drew. And so Drew does a great job finishing off the drive. He's done a great job for some protection, very aware in the check downs. So you can see him and Joe just being on the same page right there. And then again, it's, it's a tough situation for a DB to find themselves in, and Drew does a great job making a miss. Um, this is, this is a, a second play of a drive right here. Um, it's a little bit of play action. We get in a reduced split, so they bring the corner cat here off the edge. Burrow does a great job of seeing that. T's very aware that he's in the void. He does a great catch and then making one miss for an explosive play. So that, that was a big play that generated a good drive for us. And then you look at a big uh, third, third one here. So what we've had success on over the course of the season is throwing a little bubble here to Jamar. And these guys blocking on the perimeter. Um, we've had great efficiency with that on short yardage situations. And so now we're just running the double move version of that. So they bluff like they're blocking for Jamar. And he finds the ball over there to Tanner Hudson. So good third and one shot play there that our guys did a great job repping all week. And we had the confidence to call in the game and take a shot there for a big play. Zach is back after the break, giving his keys to the Bengals getting their fifth straight win, this time over the Houston Texans. This is my glory. Game day matchup sponsored by Gold Star. For this week's matchup, it's C.J. Stroud against the Bengals defensive front. Stroud has taken the NFL by storm, throwing for 14 touchdowns and just one interception this season. He actually has more passing yards and touchdowns than Joe Burrow, but he's a rookie quarterback, and the key to beating a rookie quarterback is to have rookie moments. And the Bengals' front seven can certainly force Stroud into making some bad decisions for a suddenly turnover-happy Bengals defense. The key to victory over the Houston Texans will be to make C.J. Stroud look like a rookie, which means plenty of pressure from up front. Him being so young and just being able to process the game how he does, uh, he's a good decision maker. He doesn't make a lot of bad decisions. I think he only has one pick on the year. So, you know, for a young guy, like especially a rookie quarterback, having one pick throughout this point of the season, that's pretty good. So, you know, we just got to get him, get him off, off his game a little bit. Keys to the game, sponsored by Kia. All right, Zach, time for your must. What must the Bengals do to get another win and take down the Houston Texans? Well, similar to last game, when you're playing a young quarterback who's on the road with the noise, you got to make them drive the length of the field. So our defense has done a great job pinning their ears back when teams are inside the 10-yard line. They've done a good job there and continue to score touchdowns in the red zone. A reminder, you can join us every week at the Kroger OTR Eatery in Cincinnati for Bengals Nation. See the show in person, and then you can watch the show on your TV home of the Bengals, Local 12, Saturday nights at 11.35. Jermaine, you had a decision to make in the offseason. You decide to come back to the Bengals. Take me through that decision process. Why'd you want to come back to Cincinnati? Uh, it wasn't that hard. You know, this who they drafted me, you know, they believe in me. They gave me the chance. And then I just want to be a part of something special, you know, having a chance to of winning, going to try to go to the Super Bowl again, you know, closer to the game. We we one player away, two players away, going to the same thing. You got the same core guys that's there. That's competing, you know, the same thing. You got my DC there, that, that's a big thing. You got a DC that you know what you're getting out of, you know the players you're getting around, you know. You, you know what you'll get out of these two guys. You know what you get out of Mike, you know what you get out of DJ, so why not? You both from the Greensboro, North Carolina area. Uh, DJ, when did you first hear about Jermaine? Uh, I was running over him in high school when I was playing running back. They won, but P, P no. But now, um, and then I got to, fortunately, when I went to college, man, I got to watch him still play high school ball, go on and have a great career at NC State, and just do his thing, man. He's always been just a football player, man, just a knack for just knowing how to get things done on the football field. Jermaine, what'd you know about DJ growing up? Uh, just a big boy, a big fat boy in the backfield. <laughs> you know, he'd be like, who that, who that big boy in the backfield? And then it actually played basketball, too, so you, I'm trying to front him in the post, can't do that. He's wide body. And then, you know, just seeing him playing at Clemson, just doing his thing. And then finally, then I'm watching him, watching NFL clips and stuff in college, and then see him just doing his thing in Houston, and then being one of the supreme nose tackles in the game, you know, then coming here and then making my job easy. A guy that can play both gaps, <laughs> that's, a, that's a beautiful thing for a linebacker. <laughs> this is a, I'm glad Jermaine's here this week because I want to talk about the turnovers, and you guys, Every game except for one have had at least one or two turnovers. You're pointing at Jermaine. Jermaine, that punch out you had, the slow-mo was one of the most insane punch outs I think I've ever seen. 
dude was upside down midair and you were able to just slide that fist in and knock it out. Take me through that play. Did you know or was it reactionary? I mean, I, I knew I got beat on the play, so I had to do something, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, um, that's one of the drills we do. We do this stumble bomb drill. So it is emphasis of that, you know. The ball is more vulnerable when you're trying to brace yourself going down, so I hit the ball. Turnovers are not something you can, like, plan for. It's kind of like the ball has to kind of bounce your way and they got to make a bad decision. So, Mike, how do you practice that, and how do you force so many? Because you guys are pretty good at it. And we, like you said, we practice it. We practice it every uh, every Thursday. We we know what the offense we have. You know, we put them on a the short field. It, it's game over. So, that's that's a big shout out to Pratt because he's really like he, he he's the engine of our turnover. Like our, our turnover machine is because of him. He's always emphasizing punching at the ball. Uh, for us as DBs, catching the ball, he's just always putting you know the the ball on our minds. So that's. That's what we do as a defense. Do you ask him to punch a few your way? I mean, Nick Scott got one last week. Yeah, it, it don't matter who got it. As long as, as, long as uh, someone in our colors get it, we good. <laughs> Defensively, you guys are playing so well right now against some really good offenses. Just, DJ, what's been the key to, to catching fire? Because, I mean, I'm running out of words to say how well you guys are playing. You guys are playing amazing. We got a lot of guys out there who trust each other, man. We trust the system. We trust our D coordinator. We trust our coaches, and we trust the guys. We put a lot of work in with each other. And that work, I mean, it, it translates. And like, and even when things are bad, we don't need to look at each other with palms up, thinking about, dang, it's your fault. It's just like, no, we like, who's going to make a play? We, somebody got to make a play. And P, P, the leader of the turnover chance. He be yelling at me all the time about punching the ball out like I could do it at first contact and it. But, <laughs> hey, he is the leader of the turnover chance. But that energy, that energy contagious. We hear it so much, it's drilled in your head that we know we're going to make a play, get the ball back to nine, they're going to do their thing. All right, before we let you guys go, both from the Greensboro area, one place you got to visit when you go to Greensboro. What is it? You're going to have to go to Dame's Chicken and Waffles. Oh, yeah, Dame's. Yeah, you got to go to Dame's for sure. Shout out to Dame's. Okay, anybody who's going to Greensboro, you heard it here. That's where you need to go. Straight from the guys who are from there. They got another big test. The Houston Texans come to Paycor Stadium. You can watch it on Local 12 on Sunday. Let's give a big who day for our guys this week. And thank you for coming out for another episode of Bengals Nation.